I'll tell you where the biggest pushback came from. I'm disappointed to say this, but it's absolutely true. It came from higher education. Higher ed moves at a glacially slow pace, but more than that, there are perverse incentives at stake here. Higher ed has serious money in the game to keep doing things the way we're doing it, right? And so uh, we had to really, um, we had to overcome resistance from higher ed more than any other place, hands down. Here's what Illinois did, and boy, it was really effective. I mean, they basically said, we're going to make a change. Higher ed, do you want to be at the table or not? Um, and that absolutely did it. I mean, we teach our principals that if you want to change something in your school, and schools have to change if we're going to produce different outcomes for kids, then what they need to do is engage teachers as diagnosticians to look at the data and try to collectively determine what needs to be changed and how. Otherwise, teachers are viewed as the problem to be diagnosed. And we want teachers to be the diagnosticians diagnosing the problem. Then what happens is they develop a shared consciousness and a shared buy-in about the, about the solutions. This is where teacher leadership becomes absolutely critical. But we did the same thing at the state level. If you want to make change happen, you have to involve everybody who has a stake in it. So we had the teachers' unions, we had the principals' associations, we had the, the lobbies for early childhood, for secondary ed, for special ed, and so on. We had a task force of 55 people, but within six months we had consensus. This is doable. Almost nobody is in a position to make it happen other than the state agency.